Today's segment of Sound Balming is brought to you by Jimmy and Mary's Authentic Body Care. I cannot express to you how much we love, love, love their products. Although we use them all year, as the weather gets colder, we need these products even more. The dreaded drop in temperature, the dryness, the itchiness, and the unnecessary flakiness is inevitable. Shea Butter from Jimmy and Mary's Authentic Body Care is the only thing that works for my skin and hair needs. Not only do these products cure my dry skin, the whipped butter goes on smoothly and doesn't leave that uncomfortably thick, sticky residue. Bonus? It smells absolutely amazing. There are so many different scents to choose from too. Not only do they carry skincare products, there are products for authentic living, face, shower, hair and beard, spritzers and perfumes, and bath products. Let me tell you, we cannot even keep the stuff in the studio. The entire production team, as well as all our children, use Jimmy and Mary's product. Jimmy and Mary's take pride in creating quality, handcrafted products from simple ingredients for the entire family. Their products are made for all skin types and are 100% handmade, 100% vegan, and 100% cruelty free. Skin care is important. Moisture is key and keeping our skin and hair hydrated is essential. I cannot emphasize how much we trust Jimmy and Mary's for all of our skin care needs. Hurry on up to jimmyandmarys.com and check out their products. Did I mention service is fast and efficient too? Don't forget to mention that you heard about Jimmy and Mary's authentic skin care on Sound Balmy. Use the discount code soundbalm20 to get 15% off. That's soundbalm20 for 15% off at Jimmy and Mary's Authentic Skin Care. Hey everybody, welcome to Sound Bombing. I created this show for people who want to experience a radical, life-changing journey through the sounds of my diverse guests. I hope that each sound you hear on this show will strengthen your faith, encourage your dreams, and challenge you to awaken the greatness within you. Drop the bomb. Drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. This is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new values. And a new experience. Ladies and gentlemen, the star of the show, Lamar Darnell Shields. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day it is, wherever you are, welcome to the best hour on the internet. Yes, the best podcast around. I will say that not because I am amazing, just because the people that I bring onto the show are amazing, like the gentleman that I'm going to introduce to you as soon as possible. But before we begin, I got to thank all of my listeners out there. Thank you for tuning in on all the platforms. We're on every platform that you can think of. So thank you, thank you, thank you to my new Sound Bombers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are in for a treat. And if you listened to the show last week, when I talked to Genevieve Paturo, we talked about we talked about philanthropy. We talked about her work around with children and reading to them at night and providing them with books and pajamas. Oh, that was amazing. And today is going to be just amazing. So thank you for joining me. Welcome to my show. Who am I? I'm your friend, Dr. Lamar Garniel Shields, the creator of Sound Bombing. And my goal with this show is to introduce you to people with ideas that will help you unlock your full potential. Did you hear me? That will help you unlock your full potential like my next guest, Nick Shelton. But before I introduce Nick, Nick, he's sitting there waiting patiently. What's up, Nick? How you doing? Doing good. All right, before I bring you in, we always start out with our three breaths. You all know I am into breath work, I'm into mindfulness, and I'm into meditation because I want to bring our energy up. There's so much negativity in the world. 
right now. So all we have is the present and the present is a gift. So I want to encourage you to find a comfortable position. Now, if you're driving, please don't do this. My insurance does not cover you all. So if you are driving, just keep going. Fast forward this, come back to it. But if you're at home, if you're in your office, if you're at school, I encourage you, if you want to, take your shoes off, just spill the ground. But if not, just put your feet on the floor, palms facing up. Everything is soft. Eyes closed. Face is soft. Nose, cheek. Everything is soft. We're going to scan our body. But we're going to start from the crown of our head. Then we're going to eventually end up to the balls of our feet. So we're just going to take a, a, a quick scan. And we're going to do our three breaths. So we're going to start with three, five, and then 10. And we always inhale through our nose and exhale out of our mouth. So here we go. Let's go inhale. Hold it for three seconds. Exhale. Two more times. Now we're going to go for five seconds. Inhale. Hold it for five. Exhale. Now we're going to go a little deeper. 10 seconds. Inhale. Hold it for 10 seconds. Exhale. And what is that called? That is called the breath of life. And yes, I am rocking my Jamaica hat. I'm rocking my man, Bob Marley, because I love Bob Marley. And we're always talking about positive vibes. So shout out to Bob Marley. Shout out to our new president, vice president-elect, who also has Jamaican roots. So again, shout out to all those folks out there. But again, special shout out to my man, Bob Marley, let's get this party started. Introversion. Yes, I said it. Introversion is a basic personality characterized, style characterized by a preference for the inner life of the mind over the outer world of other people. Introversion sits on a continuum at the opposite of which is extroversion. Compared to extroverts, introverts enjoy subdued and solitary experiences. Introverts do not fear or dislike others and they are neither shy nor plagued by loneliness. A crowded cocktail party may be torture to intro introverts, but they enjoy one-on-one -on -one engagement in calm environments, which is more suited to make up of their nervous system. Evidence suggests that unlike extroverts, the brains of introverts do not react strongly to viewing novel human faces. In such situations, they produce less dopamine and a neurotransmitter associated with reward. Well, introversion is positively healthy, if often, but often misunderstood. It's a way of negotiating the world with a low threshold for small talk and superficialities. Introverts enjoy conversations that are deep and meaningful, that can make them highly attuned to those they engage with. Well, our next guest, Nick Shelton, will share with us some tips on how introverts can make excellent leaders since they tend to be guided by their own values and can make difficult decisions through careful analysis without feeling the intense need for social approval. Nick Shelton, the connected introvert who has been fine tuning the craft of effective high level social strategy and networking for 20 years, beginning with his time in the United States Air Force. Nick learned skills that were indispensable to his journey, coupled with extensive research and 15 years of experience in the oil and gas industry, Nick finally cracked the code and developed tools that gave him the confidence to flourish in social situation. I would like to welcome to the sound bombing community. Welcome, 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 Nick Shelton. How are you? I'm great. It's an honor to be here. Thank you very much. And I am so honored and excited about this because my Engine, my producer, not my engineer, my producer, Nicole, claims, Nick, that she is an introvert. Now, she's going to be watching. She's behind. Stop making the faces. She claims she's an introvert, so maybe you can help me understand this. That's why I'm bringing you here. And again, some introverts are really loving COVID. We're not being sick of COVID, but right. again, what's going on with COVID. So before we dive deep into that and before we try to um, unlock the uh, minds of an introvert and, and challenge my super duper producer who says she's an introvert. I want to know, Nick, let our listeners know where you're calling in from. And then let's just do a mental check in because I like to check in with my guests because we're dealing with this COVID pandemic. How are you holding up? Okay, well, I'm calling in from Denver, Colorado, 
It's a beautiful day out today. Uh, no snow, so I'm very happy about that. And uh, yeah, it's 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 very nice today. And uh, for the mental check, I'm I'm hanging in there very well. Uh, you know, I'm healthy. The family's healthy. All my friends are healthy. So so yeah, I, I'm very happy with that and I've been coping very well. There's a, a meme out there and you kind of mentioned this with the COVID where it, it uh, shows a picture, introverts before COVID, introverts after COVID and it's the same picture where they're just sitting there in the house. And uh, it's, so it's not for introverts, it's not that big of a change in the lifestyle, but you know, I do miss going out on occasion. You know, it's not like I'm out there trying to party it up all the time, but I, I do miss some of the, uh, the social gatherings. Well, Nick, let me just tell you, Denver, or let me just say Colorado, is one of my favorite places. I love Colorado. Shout out to Denver, my good friend, Alicia Cook, who runs a program called Friends First, doing some amazing work. I love Denver. Denver is one of the only places where you can get all four seasons in one day. Well, let me just say Colorado. Well, you can get all – am I correct by saying that, Nick? Yes, you are correct, all four seasons. <laughs> Nick, you can walk outside with a, with a turtleneck on, a snowsuit, a hat, and then you can run into Whole Foods or you can go to Trader Joe's, whatever grocery store, and you coming out wearing, you know, short sleeves, <laughs> boots. I mean, I never understood it, but I love, I love Colorado, man. So thank you for joining me. So, Nick, let's get, this, let's get started, man. Can you okay. tell us about yourself and why you consider yourself – as an introvert? Oh, well, I, I started from, uh, I'd say when I was in second grade is when I knew something was a little different, that, uh, you know, there, was, there were people that were able to just navigate these social, social scenes and environments really well, even starting that early. And I wasn't able to do that. And I used to, to wonder about that and say, why, why am I why, finding it so difficult? And I really enjoyed as you mentioned when you were uh, giving that definition earlier, I really enjoyed one-on-one -on -one time with people, but not crowds. And I also liked alone time. And as I got older, you know, I also, you know, so introverts usually just like, they like spending time alone, they recharge their energy alone. But, and you made a good point earlier, it, introverted people aren't necessarily shy or socially awkward, but a lot of times that does uh, a lot of introverts do have the additional trait of being shy and or socially awkward too. And I was one of those that had all three, introvert, shy, and socially awkward. And so I, I saw that I was missing out on a lot of opportunities and people that I'd like to meet because I was always in the shadows. And then I would see people less qualified than myself get ahead just because they were always out there stepping into the light. And so... I said, uh, and I felt like an alien from another planet that didn't pay attention in my How to Blend In with Humans class. And then they sent me here and I was like, oh no, I should have paid attention in the class. So I had to figure it out. And uh, so th there were a lot of growing pains along the way and there were no resources because they have resources for, uh, you know, to network and things like that. But they're written for normal people, not for people like us. So I had to get in the trenches and, and figure it out. And then once I did, there were other people that said, help us. <laughs> we would like to do that too. Well, and that's, that's, what, well, that's why we brought you here, man, to really unpack some of these, some of these myths, some of these realities, some of these truths. Speaking of that, what are some of the myths or misconceptions of introverts? So I would say back to that, uh, people think that you're automatically shy just because you're introverted or socially awkward because you're introverted, but that's not necessarily the case. Also, a big one is I know a lot of introverts that are very good at public speaking. And I know that it's a misconception. People would think, well, if you're introverted, you would definitely not want to do public speaking, but that's not necessarily the case. Uh, there's, there are a lot that excel at it. Now, when they're done speaking, they might not want to go uh, crowd surfing or anything like that. They might just want to quietly just get off and go do their own thing on the side. But those are a few right there. Well, speaking of, speaking of some of the misconceptions, what are some of the biggest challenges introverts face when it comes to networking? You talked about networking. You talked about 
some of the some of the speakers that are out there who are like, yeah, I like to speak, but then I want to get off the stage and run somewhere else. So what are some right. of the biggest challenges? And then what are some of the strategies that you've used? And we're going to dive into your book shortly. What are some of the strategies that you use to uh, combat some of those challenges that you've been dealing with, even as a, even as a young child? So I'd say one of the main challenges is just showing up. Nothing happens until you show up. And a lot of times, uh, many introverts will say, oh, I'm glad that I was invited. And then, but they don't actually go because they don't want to go to any events. But you have to show up. Uh, If you don't show up, then, you know, you're not going to, definitely not going to get those opportunities or meet those people. So uh, showing up is number one. Then you have Uh, getting known. A lot of introverts like to fly below the radar and just say, I'll just kind of be in the background. But, you know, you can't do that. So an example would be like if you are flying below the radar and your company starts laying people off, are they going to lay off the person that they know who they are and what they do? Or, hey, this person, I don't know who they are, what they do. They're just kind of in the background. Let's get rid of that person. So you don't want to blend in. You, you want to get known. You want people to know who you are and what you do. And that also makes it easier to, uh, you don't have to, if people know who you are and what you do, you don't have to exert yourself that much to try to meet new people or people that are in an area because they will already know who you are. They'll come up and they'll introduce themselves to you, less things for you to do. And then, you know, making connections, how to connect, like uh, we heard this, the saying, it, uh, show me your friends, I'll show you your future, and you're the five people you spend the most time around. But then you say, well, where do I go? How do I meet those people? And then when I meet them, how do I connect with those people? So uh, that's one of the other things. And then the maintaining of the relationships. Uh, and you don't have to be an introvert for this. Most people are terrible at maintaining the relationships. And say that you can, that is a tweetable, as, as Oprah said, that's a tweetable <laughs> opportunity. Most of us are horrible at maintaining relationships slash friendships. Yes. And so when you put those pillars together, then you have a good, uh, good plan. And those are a lot of things that uh, introverts and a lot of people that aren't introverts are weak at, but once we can uh, strengthen ourselves in those, those pillars, then everything flows beautifully. So, so talk to me about young Nick Shelton. And the reason why I'm asking you this question, because I want you to give some advice to a, to a, a person who's definitely an extrovert. But with, with, what I have introvert uh, uh, t- tendencies, like Bob Marley, and I'm wearing his hat because Bob was definitely known to be this, li- this, this person with this loud personality, but really, really liked that alone time. So I want, I want you to tell me about, about, about young Nick because I have, a da- I have two daughters with three children and my youngest daughter is in the, my, my youngest daughter in the, in the middle. And I believe that extroverts really wear her out. Let me give you a prime example. And, I, and I'm, you probably can relate to this. This weekend, we had some family in from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. You know, my, my sister, her two children, this is my god sister and her two children, my nephews came in and we hung out all day. And my daughter, when we got back to the house, she went into her room and I'm learning how to engage her as she gets older because I don't want to pressure her, come downstairs, your family's here. And she just went upstairs and closed the door and she was exhausted. I mean, she was worn out. And so a friend of mine, you know, I mean, my, my god sister went up there and said, hey, are you going to come downstairs? She says, you know, just give me, a, give me a couple of minutes. And then when I told her what we were doing, it was like we were doing making stuff like gingerbread house and things of that nature with some of the younger kids. And she's really, really good with children. Not good with adults as much, really good with children. And she came back down. But I observe her quite a bit. I mean, you know, Nick, we can have a house full of family members, cousins that are her age. And my daughter will be up there hanging out, as the young people say, turning up, getting lit. And then all of a sudden, homegirl would just disappear. <laughs> yes. and be gone into a room. So I, I need you to help me as a parent to engage her in, in the other. Because again, this is, this is personal with me. But then I, with that being said, I also want you to tell me, about you know, young Nick and how your parents and, and your friends and families engaged you. Because I don't, I don't want her to ever think there's anything wrong with her and I'm constantly giving her you know, guidance and, and complimenting her. But still, when you go back in that room by yourself with technology and all this other stuff, society says something else. Right. Oh, that's really good. Really good examples. And yeah, that brings back a lot of memories of my own. But uh, yeah, for your daughter, I would say, you know, plan on that, plan on that happening. And, you know, respect it because she'll, she'll 
come back out just like she came back down and, and spent some time a little later. But, you know, she spends a, a chunk of time with all the relatives and then she goes to a room, then, you know, she's going to need, you know, and then you, you might say, well, how long is it going to be? Is it 10 minutes? You need 20 minutes. But, uh, you know, only she really knows and she might not know until she's actually goes to a room and she has to kind of, uh, you know, get her, it's like charging your phone, you know, get back, maybe not up to 100%, but, you know, maybe charge yourself up to about 70% and then she can come back out. And sometimes it might just be 10 minutes and sometimes it might be, you know, an hour. But it's really, if you make them come out and you say, hey, you're going to come out and you're going to spend time with these people, then it's, you're not going to get a really optimal performance. They're probably just going to be sitting there just uh, really closed in because they haven't, they, they've already been drained earlier and they haven't really got the, to be able to recharge that energy. So are those some things that happened to you? And then if so, or if not, how did your parents engage you? Oh, well, my parents, they, uh, they, they were not as uh, open as today's parents. So they would say, hey, you're, you're going to go. You're gonna, <laughs> there's, no, there's no you can retreat and do your own thing over here. There was none of that. So I just had to just be pushed out there. And then so I would pretty much just sit over on the side. Mm -hmm. And so I'd be there with everybody, but I wouldn't be actively engaging with people I would, but I'd be just be present. And because nobody even thought about that, maybe you need some time alone. <laughs> that was not a, a thing that anyone ever thought about or discussed. So did you ever feel, Nick, that there was something wrong with you? Because, and the reason I'm asking you that, because I have three children and my son and my oldest daughter have these loud personalities. They really, you know, they're, and it's, it's so these big personalities. But then what I do love about my, my youngest daughter Nick, when I put her, so I got her into theater and acting because I was, I read a story about several actors who introverts, very shy, but when they got on stage, they became somebody else. And she, let me just tell you, if I, if I, if I take this girl for a ride and one more time she put in some show tunes, I'm like <laughs> the show tunes, uh, Jay-Z, give me a little Jay-Z, but I respect that because I love the theater as well. Um, but did you ever feel, did you ever just feel like, you know, weird and strange compared to your other, do you have, you have other siblings? I have one brother and yes, he is definitely, he says he's an introvert, which it could be the case, but he doesn't seem to have any of the traits that I would associate with that. But he Did just- you feel like an outsider, feel strange and not- well, I, I did at first, but then I met a lot of other people similar to me, similar personalities at school and things like that, where I said, okay, well, if I'm some kind of misfit, there are these other misfits too. And so we kind of banded together in our groups. But I always did feel like, well, there's something different about us uh, compared to the other people, but at least I'm not the only one. There are some other people out there like this. And there's different degrees of that because some were worse than me, or I don't know if it's worse would be the right name. Some were had a more <laughs> severe, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, and then some were a little less, but uh, I knew that there were others out there. And so it, it made it so it was, it wasn't so, I didn't feel alone, really. So then you wrote this book, you know, what made you realize you need to write your best selling book, An Introvert's Guide to World Domination, man, it, this, this right here sounds like a Star Wars trilogy, man. <laughs> Introverts Guide to World I can say dom I was about to say denomination, like we we're talking about churches. We don't want to we don't want to talk about that, but we're talking about introverts worlds domination. What was the inspiration and what should my listeners or any reader who picks up this great book, uh, what should they get out of this? Or what will they gain from reading this? Yeah, so the world domination, it's not about taking over the world. It's about your world, your inner world and your outer world having control over that. And so what led me to write that book is I started coaching introverts how to build their, their networks, communicate better and upgrade their lives and lifestyles through these relationships. And then I started doing a lot of speaking. And so when I would 
give a speech or something, people would come up and say, where can we get your book? And I didn't have a book. So I said, I should probably get a book out because people keep asking me. So I sat down. It only took me about three weeks to write it because I knew exactly what I wanted to say. And I just said it, put it all out there. And basically what anyone picking up this book can, can learn is, uh, so one thing that I noticed from other books is a lot of books start you somewhere in the middle. So you say, I am beginning, I'd like to learn this. What do I do? And then you open up their book and then they start somewhere in the middle. And you say, no, I, I need it from the beginning, not the middle. And so I said, let me write this book from the beginning. So if you are starting off at nothing, how do you build a really strong high level network? And so I take them through the steps and they're all very intuitive, very easy things. And, uh, you know, I just walk them through first, do this then do this. And so what they'll get is they will be able to position themselves uh, to be known in the networks of their choosing, whether they be, you know, and the book is mainly geared toward like a higher level network uh, because I wanted to, for me, I wanted to surround myself with the high achievers, people that were doing a lot of great things. And that would bring out those habits in me, bring out the best in me and kind of uh, push and pull me up to higher levels in my life by surrounding myself with great people. So I show people how to do that. So readers of the book will learn how to uh, do that, how to, when you show up at an event, exactly what to do before you go in, when you walk in, how to engage with people and make those real connections, bring down the, you know, break past the small talk and into real, real talk and real connections. And then once you have those connections, how to maintain those connections so they, because what use is it of building a network and then just letting it all fade away? You want to maintain it. So uh, they will learn all of those things. Plus, you know, I throw in some, some things that like cover dating for introverts and things like that too. There's a couple of bonus things in there as well. So, so walk me, take me through a couple of the tips. So I'm coming to you. I want to, I want to read, I'm reading the book. Uh, I want to discuss the, have a conversation with you. What are some tips? Give me about two or three tips uh, okay. for an introvert. So one thing about, uh, and this is, this is really relevant for your listeners right now, since we're kind of in a semi-lockdown situation, there's a lot of people at home and they would say, well, what can I do to build my network while I'm at home and not really going out anywhere? And so you can do what I call getting pre-known and how you get pre-known is, so any, uh, industry or organization will have a they'll have a uh, a social media presence and usually with that there'll be some kind of chat group or forum that uh, people are chatting on so for example let's just say beekeeping is an example i like to use so if i wanted to get into beekeeping or if i wanted to meet the type of people that are beekeepers then i would go online i could look for, you know, beekeeping meetup. And I also, another example is pilots. I wanted, I said, it'd be cool to know some private pilots just in case I needed to fly somewhere. Uh, and I, or I, a private pilot said, Hey, I'm taking this jet. So do you want to go? Then, you know, I should probably know some. So I typed in, you know, meetup, uh, private pilots. And then, so then there's a, uh, you look at their social media, you, you sign up for a, the next coming event, which might be, you know, months away or whenever it's going to be. And then you first start observing and see who the top uh, two or three voices in that chat room are uh, that are carrying the conversations. And then you're going to want to kind of piggyback on their comments, you know, compliment them or ask a question and just interact with them, not in some crazy way, but just lightly. So they get used to seeing your name pop up. And then when the event is coming around, then you say, so for example, if you met on the, in that chat room, Jim and Susan, you would say, hey, Jim, hey, Susan, I'm going to the event. I'm looking forward to putting a face with a name, seeing you at the event. And then they'll say, sure, yeah, come meet me. And then so what this does, it's kind of like a pre-approved credit card, I like to say. You're already halfway there. Now you have to just sign. So you're, you're, you got to go confirm these relationships. So now when the event comes and you show up, uh, you're now, instead of just walking in cold and just trying to figure it out, now you're walking in and you're looking for Jim and Susan. They're looking for you. And 
usually if they're really strong in that chat room, they're going to be strong in that, uh, that group as well. So you walk in, you meet them, they're going to introduce you around. So now you're meeting people from the top down in that organization and you start it all just in the comfort of your living room versus just walking in cold, trying to figure it out. So that's one tip. I'm getting pre-known. <laughs> So you have, a, you have a bunch of tips in there, but, but I also heard you have a bunch of networking tips, but I also heard, uh, and this was shared with me from my producer, as well as you just mentioned it, you talked about dating tips. Now, discuss with me some dating tips from inch for, for introverts, because again, I want to get in dating. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of shy. I'm kind of introverted. Don't know where to start. Walk me through that process. Okay. So... One easy way to do it is if you are, if you have an interest, everyone has some kind of interest. So let's say if you like going to the, I'm going to say the symphony, right? So if I like going to the symphony and I go by myself because it's okay to go by yourself, you don't need to go with somebody else. You can just go. So if I go to the symphony and uh, there's a lot of times, if, you, if I go several times, I'm going to see mostly the same people because people that are into that, are, are going to, that, that group of people, they'll usually go repeatedly. And so if I see somebody there that I'm interested in, then I can, I can just observe them one time. And then the next time I could just say, you know, hi, talk about the show. Hey, looking forward to this show. And it can start off really light and easy because if I see someone I like there, we're not we're not there as something. There's no expectation from me. I'm just there doing something that I enjoy, looking, at the, looking and listening to the symphony, and they're there doing their thing. So I'm seeing them in their natural habitat. They're not, you know, it's not a job interview sort of thing. They're just there doing what they love. I'm there doing what I love. And then uh, after a few of these times, and it, you know, it could be, it doesn't have to be a symphony, any sort of thing that you're into where you see the person, and then you can say, uh, after a few times, they've kind of gotten to know you in that environment and you've gotten to know them, but there's, it's, you're not, once again, there's no pressure because you're not dating them. You're just there at the symphony. And then you can say, you can pick out a different event that is kind of along the line. So if there was a, a chamber orchestra or something uh, that's going to be in the neighboring town, you can say, hey, have you heard about this? And then they would say, Oh, no, or maybe they had. And then you could say, hey, I, have, I happen to have an extra ticket. One thing that you can use also is you can say, I won it or someone gave it to me. My boss gave me uh, two you tickets want, to You that. don't want to sound too pressed, right? As the young people say, you don't want to sound like too pressed or too excited. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. my, my boss gave me uh, the ticket. This also works for gift certificates. You can say, Hey, I won this gift certificate to this restaurant over here. Would you like to go? You know, or hey, I I got two tickets to this. Would you like to be my plus one? And then they can say, Oh, sure. And so once again, you're not saying it's a date necessarily, but you're just kind of you got to know them in a lightly in this one way where you normally are and they normally are there in something that you both share that interest. And now you're kind of separating it. So now it's almost like a date. It's like date light. And then you see how you get along there. And then from that point, it's a lot easier to escalate it into dating if it seems like things are working. But it's a nice, slow progression. It's not just walking up. Hey, can I get your number? You want to go, you know? Well, since you are, since we've gone from networking to dating expert, just let you all know now, Nick Shelton is the dating expert. So I have a <laughs> dating question for you. Okay. What are some of the arguments that are typically happen between an extrovert and an introvert in a relationship. Um, it could be, it could be, it could be an intimate relationship or it could just be some a type of friendship. What are some things that you, that you have heard quite of or experienced between an introvert uh, and an extrovert in a relationship? Usually the extrovert is always trying to get the introvert to go and do stuff like, hey, let's go to this dinner party with my friends. And you're like, I don't want to go to the dinner party. With you. What's wrong with just being here? And so usually the extrovert wants to go out and hit the scene a lot while the introvert's saying, hey, why can't we just spend time together here? I'm good here. I, would, I was planning to spend the weekend. Uh, so a lot of times 
you know, the introvert will say, oh, okay, this weekend, I'm going to just maybe get a book and just sit down and read this book. And then the extrovert will say, oh, I've already made plans for us. <laughs> we're, we're going to go to uh, uh, Kevin and Janine's house for a barbecue. And they go, oh, well, I was just planning on, you know, being here. So it's, that's one of the main things is they don't necessarily, the extrovert will try to drag the introvert out to go do stuff. And what I like to do is, well, nowadays I like to actually go out because I say, I don't really want to go, but I, I'm going to go just because I need to go. But uh, if I didn't want to, then I say, hey, you go and I am going to be here. And, you know, just need them to understand that just like your daughter going to the room, they need yeah. to understand, hey, maybe it's best to not force him to go because him or her to go because it might be a much worse scene if you force them to go than if you just let them stay. For those that are just joining us late, yes, this is Nick Shelton, <laughs> who writes books about networking. Now he's become the introvert, extrovert, dating expert. <laughs> new book coming out really, really soon. Ent introverts and extroverts dating tips by Nick Shelton. <laughs> Nick, what are some of the things that you want people to know about introverts that they don't know? We talked about some of the challenges. We talked about some of the misconceptions. What are some things that you want people to know about introverts as it relates to networking, relationships, partnerships, friendships that they just may not know? I think introverts are uh, really very intelligent usually. And I can say the advantage over most extroverts would be that introverts are masters at observation. So while the extrovert might just be out there in the spotlight, hey, everybody, this is what I think, then the introvert would be sitting there observing, taking it in, and so they notice a lot of things. And so before they start talking, they have a lot more information. And so when they're in your, in your workplace, in your company, or just in your friendship group, they will usually be the ones with the most information on what's happening because they are observing what's going on. And so they can a lot of times make better decisions. That doesn't mean they don't make mistakes, but they have more information. And a lot of people aren't aware of that. I think most introverts, when, when you let them know that, hey, you, because I, I think they assume that everyone else is observing as well, but that's not the case. Introverts usually are kicking back, taking in the scene, and they notice a lot of things. So if you want to know something about a certain event, you probably want to ask the introvert that was there because they were sitting there watching instead of just going, uh, going off, uh, yapping away, <laughs> not saying that that's a bad thing either. Yeah. So I think now my title is I'm an introvert in recovery, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in recovery because because I'm listening to you as being an extrovert who's, who loves being around people, but then I also do get into my shell. I like quiet time. I don't have a problem going to the movies by myself, going to the, going to the theater. Uh, being with my kids by myself without without their mother, you know, hanging out with my mom without my brothers and sisters. So I do I do have a lot of a lot of those traits. So talk to me about a success story. Tell me a sh tell share with my audience with a success story of someone that you work with who might have just was just like mm -mm, I'm not doing it. I'm not going out. I'm staying here. I'm not networking. I'm not dating. I'm almost at the hermit level. Um, <laughs> share a success story with our listeners. Okay, so one of my students named Shane, uh, he, was, he was doing some real estate. He was a real estate guy. And you say, well, can real estate people be introverted? Yes, apparently they can. And, you know, but it's important that you connect with people, you know, when you're trying to sell real estate. And so he would kind of hit a slump and he was thinking, well, what, you know, what can I do? And so uh, I kind of coached him up and gave him some tips on, you know, showing up, pick out some events, get on the list, get invited, show up. And then when you get in there, here are some things to not blend in and to connect with people. And then he immediately went out and did that. And then he called really excited and said, Hey, I, it was really easy. And he coached up his wife too. He said, I told my wife what you'd said. We went in there and he said, uh, we were, like the, the talk of the, the event, people were coming up talking to us and he uh, not only got some good uh, real estate leads, but then he met somebody that 
uh, they're going to do like a business partnership together that he said that all that all came about from just these simple tips by showing up and you know, I always say, walk in the room, head toward the food, head toward the food. Because, you know, instead of walking in there and just kind of looking confused and standing there in the doorway, if you know you're going to walk in, if, if you walk in, where's the food? And you just, that's where your first stop is. Then, you know, you walk in and I just give them a game plan because a lot of times, a lot of introverts, it's, if you just have a plan, if you know what to do. So this takes me to one of my, one of my mentors that told me, because people always talk about, I'm going all in, I'm going all in, but you can't go all in if you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I give people a, a plan. Here's your plan. Here's your backup plan to the plan. And then, so you know exactly what to do. So you're not guessing and trying to figure it out. You walk in and you have your assignment. This is what I'm here to do. And the main thing is like expectations. You're not there to meet the whole room. You're trying to make one solid connection, just one. You might not make it and you might make more, but your goal is one. And so you're not overwhelmed and weighed down. Yeah, I think walking to the food is always great because it's definitely going to create a conversation. If you're a drinker, walking to the bar, definitely going to create a conversation. Several things that I used to do to my daughter, and I still do it, and she's gotten so much better, is I would send her in, I would sit in the car and I would send her into the store. I would send her into the grocery store. I would send her into, uh, you know, um, Walgreens or Walmart. And I would give her money, a credit card, because I wanted her to start being engaged. Because what happened was my son, who's much younger, who's very vocal, he would almost like talk for her. And so, again, sending her on these journeys by herself is really, really helping her. And then also, you know, she has a, a great therapist that she's working with. And I look at some of the motivational, inspirational words that are on her mirror that's really getting her to talk up. But one of the things I've definitely learned about her, she's an, she's, she's an introvert and she's an empath. So she takes on a lot of the pain of other people. And so I had to learn about that. So this show, doing shows like this, I must admit, Nick, not only just helps my listeners, but it also helps me because when I interviewed another person who was an empath and I went down, Nick, I played the interview with my daughter and I said, is this you? And she says, yes. And I said to her, I'm so sorry. I literally apologized to her for, you know, being upset and, and just, you know, when, when loud sounds would take place and, you know, we would be outside and there was so many di different things going on. Like I said, this weekend, I'm learning her as she gets older, she, you know, she's 16. And I know it can be a lot to be around a little kid. She loves kids, but you just said it. She recharged herself and then she came back down on her own time. Now, the old me, Nick, was like <laughs> your parents. Yes. I'm not from the old school. But I'm, my folks are from the old school who are from the old school. Yes. So I, I am, she's making me a better person. I just want to say it to my daughter, Samira Shields, you're making me a better person by observing the world through her lens as an, as an introvert, but then also as an empath. And for all those listeners that are out there who not only just have children, but also have colleagues that you're working with, family members, neighbors, who may be different from you in any other way, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing strange about you. You just see the world through a different lens. So, Nick, take us home, buddy. Leave some parting comments for our listeners that are out there. I'd like to say, hey, show up. Make sure you show up because nothing happens until you show up. And, you know, don't fly below the radar. Make sure that you are not another forgettable interaction with somebody. You want to be remembered. So, you know, uh, just show up and... and uh, and go all out. You well, know, you your one life. Hey, you heard it here from Nick Shelton, the connected introvert. Nick, before you leave, let our listeners know how they can get in contact with you if they wanna if they wanna work with you because they're an introvert and or an extrovert, and if they wanna get a copy of your book. Okay, so to uh, find out more about me and the the book and my uh, video courses and coaching, you can go to connectedintrovert.com. That's connectedintrovert.com. And then for the book, you can find a link to the book on that site, or you can just uh, go to either Amazon or Barnes & Noble, type in An Introvert's Guide to World Domination, and it will pop up there. And that's available on Kindle and paperback. I love it. I love it. But before you leave, Nick, my sec the second part of the show is called The Super Bomb Questions, brought to you by Mountain Maid. It's an opportunity for me to ask you some different questions. And I know introverts don't like to be put on the spot. <laughs> right now so you need to answer these questions as quickly as possible are you okay. ready Nick? i'm ready 
All right, so here we go. What's your favorite word? Favorite word is yes. Ah, what's your favorite quote, Bible verse, or hip hop lyric? <laughs> oh, wow. What would that be? <laughs> huh. Uh, favorite quote is if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I love it. What's your superpower? Superpowers observation. What's your spirit animal? Spirit animal is dragonfly. What brings you to tears of joy? Tears of joy. Hmm, whenever I think of my, uh, uh, my niece invited me to her school play. And when I went and they're doing the three Billy goats gruff and she saw me in the audience and she said, you made it. And she was so happy in that it really choked me up because yeah, I, I, I don't know why, but that brought me to tears of joy. And that wasn't a part of her line of the script, right? <laughs> no. What brings you to tears of sorrow? Tears of sorrow? Huh. When, uh, I guess when I see uh, uh, bad things happen to uh, animals or children. What do you wish you had more time to do? Wish I had more time for sailing. I like sailboats. What is the book or books you've given most as a gift and why? The Little Prince. The Little Prince is the, my main go-to book to give as a gift because it's so simple, but the message is so powerful, and I, I like to share it with the world, so I share it by giving it. Great book. What, what, what values do you live by every day? Uh, get up early, show up, and... Uh, Give it, give it your all. If you win the Mr. America Talent Competition representing the great state of Colorado, Nick Shelton, what would your talent be? Hula hooping. <laughs> Let's give it up for my man, <laughs> Nick Shelton, the hula hoop champion. You know, thank you for joining me. You have been definitely engaged and listened to Nick Shelton, who is the connected introvert. Nick, thanks for hanging out with me today in the bomb shelter. Thank you very much for having me. It was great. I would also like to thank my amazing engineer, Alexander Blanc, my super duper producer, Nicole Klimpaka, who claims that she is an introvert. Sometimes she says she's shy. Supremacy for our theme music. He's definitely not an introvert. He's a barber. He talks a lot. And he's a DJ. And I want to thank all of you for listening. Make sure you subscribe. We cannot do this show without you. For all the introverts and extroverts out there, please leave a comment. Stop being stingy and share me with all of your friends. We're on every platform. If you want to make a donation, go to buymeacupofcoffee.com backslash sound bombing. And as always, believe that something wonderful is about to happen. And as some people miss the message because they're too busy looking for the next. Thanks for tuning in. And you've been listening to Sound Bomb. And thanks a lot, Nick. Thank you. Peace. The Super Bomb Questions are brought to you by Mountain Made CBD. Mountain Maid is changing the CBD game by offering a line of high-dose CBD tablets at an affordable price. Their products are THC-free and third-party tested for accuracy, cleanliness, and potency. Their products, which ship nationwide, include Build for CBD saturation, Boost for precision titration, and recover for rest and rehab. With nine years experience in hemp and fitness, Mountain Maid's founders are focused on creating a quality product to help those who live an activated lifestyle. Check out mountainmade.life. Again, that's mountainmade.life to find out more about how their products can help you crush life. Remember, their products ship nationwide. Go check out their website today and follow them on social media at Mountain Made. That's the at symbol M N T M A D E. Our staff at Sound Balming uses Build before our morning workout, which helps to push our bodies to a whole new level on a daily basis. Try Build, try Boost, try Recover. Our staff is using these products to enhance our active lifestyle naturally, and we are crushing life with Mountain Made CBD, and you can too. 
Start today by going to mountainmade.life and ordering Build, Boost, Recover, or the multitude of other products that they have which will enhance your lifestyle. I promise you, you won't regret it.